have a question. Yeah. This one is complex form. So, so the, the, the um, uh, a system the final answer, final answer, answer in the final final answer final answer final answer. So it says one over one i, and it is i. I'm having a hard time hearing you. So it says one over one i. Just a second. I got too many things like in the way here. Hold on. Okay, and you guys can see the screen, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so go ahead. What did you say again? So it's, so it's one, one over one, one plus, plus I. I. But the plus, plus I is underneath with, with the, the one, one in the denominator. denominator. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's see. So one over one plus i. Oh my god! And then next, <laughs> it will be plus i squared. Plus i squared. Yeah, yeah but, but um, uh, on the other, other side, side of, of, it's not part of the reflection. Uh, it's next to it. Okay, just a second. I'm let me move this. Okay. Sorry, I just have too many things trying to get in the way here. Okay, so you said the I squared isn't underneath? No, no, it's, it's next, next to, to it. it. Okay. But yeah, but then I. Okay, and where are you getting this from? I'm just curious where this. So okay, this, this one, one is from 2060 for an exam. exam. Okay. All right, and what is it asking you to do on this? So, so it's asking to simplify, simplify the following and, and write your final answer, answer in the complex form a plus b i. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll just tell you right now, there's not going to be anything like this on the exam, um, not even remotely close to it. I mean, the most that you would have to do is like if you had something like 4 plus i times like 3 minus 2i or something like that and multiply those together. Um, so if you know how to do something like that and you know how, you know, and just remember that when you get like i squared that that equals negative 1 and that the square root of negative 1 is i, right? So that you, so that's mostly like what you would have to do. Because on this one, like this is combining two different things together, and this you said this was 2017. Yes, yes 2016. 2016. Yeah, and so we've changed a lot of the stuff in um, Math 1010 since then, and so this is actually not one of the objectives anymore. In so you won't find anything like that on there. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, Vicky. Yeah. All right. Any other questions you guys came across that you want some help with? So what kind of concepts would you guys like to go over then? Like what things are you feeling like you need more help with? Say that one more time. Can we do word problems? Yeah, what kind of word problems would you like to try? I feel like it's 
the distance for the time one, whichever one. So I feel like there's like two different ways to do them. Uh huh. There definitely are different ways you can do. And um, so somebody asked about which one should we be practicing then? Um. Uh, like so, everything from like 2019 on, you know, should be should be good to to look at. So there are some that I put in there that yeah that are more recent. Did you guys see those? Okay, so. So what kind of word problems then did you say? Like which, like, because we talked about like work problems. We've talked about um, like ones where you have to use systems of linear equations. There's um, like distance equals rate times time. There's the Pythagorean like, theorem. Um, What's that? Like uh, 16 from the 2019. And 23. Okay. Let's have a different 2019 view. Oh, okay. Do you want to just tell me what it says? I don't have that one right. Here, find me, I think. Yeah, so it's number 16 for 2021, but. It says a boat can travel three miles upstream against the current in the same amount of time. Takes travel seven miles downstream with the current. If the speed of the current is four miles per hour, find the speed of the boat in still water. Be sure to include the proper units. So just the speed of the boat? Is that what I asked for? Yeah, just the speed of the boat. In okay, the so it says three, it can go three miles um, uh, upstream, upstream against the current. Uh -huh. In the same amount of time it takes to travel seven miles downstream with the current. Okay. Okay, so if we set this up with our little table here, right, we have our distance equals rate times time, and we know we're going to have some things dealing with upstream and others with downstream, right? So we're going to have those are where our two equations are going to come from. Right, so we do know the distances on these, right? So, um, and this this four miles an hour was the speed of the current, right? From what you said. Yeah, it's the speed of the current. Okay. Okay. All right. And if you want to mute yourself for a second, it sounds like there's stuff in the background. Oh, yeah. That's okay. All right, so let's um, look at this. So we'll have, um, so upstream, we know we can go three miles. Downstream, we can go seven miles, right? And all we know is that they, that happens in the same amount of time, right? Now, remember that the rate, and this is where a lot of people make mistakes on it. Remember, rate is made up of the boat speed plus or minus the speed of the current. All right, so you have to have those two different parts there. And so, um, you know, sometimes people just try to put like four miles an hour in both of those rates, but that's not really helping you because that's just part of it. That's the current speed, right? It goes here. So we don't know the boat speed, right? So make sure you assign some variables of what you're trying to find, right? So I'm going to say B equals the boat speed. Um, because that's an important part of writing these problems is making sure that you know what is counting for what, right? And then, um, and then our rate on that would be our boat speed. And we're going upstream, so that's against the current. And so we're going to have minus, so that's the minus part, right, of how fast our current is. So B minus 4. And then downstream, that current's pushing you faster. You're going four miles an hour faster than you normally could. So that would be B plus four. 
Right. And now time is what we don't know, um, but we can write this, we can kind of rewrite this in a different way. So remember our formula is distance equals rate times time, but it's telling us that the time is the same. So we want to solve this equation for time. So to get t by itself, we'll divide both sides by r. And so that tells us that time is found by taking the distance, dividing it by the rate. And we have those two things. So that's what we would put in here. So the distance is 3 over b minus 4. And then on the, on the downstream one, the distance is 7. And the rate is b plus 4. And then again, we got to go back to the same amount of time. So that means that we need to set these two equal to each other to solve it. All right, so if I do that, I've got 3 over b minus 4 equals 7 over b plus 4. Okay. And then what can we do? do to solve this from here. So we're trying to find that boat speed. Anybody? You say 3 parentheses b minus 4 equals 7 parentheses b plus 4. Okay, yeah, we're going to be multiplying, I mean, the, the actual thing that we're doing here, right, is multiplying both sides by the LCD, and the LCD is B minus 4 times B plus 4. And so if I'm multiplying both sides by it, so over here, if I have B minus 4 times B plus 4, and that's all over 1, then I can see that these B minus 4s divide out, and that's where you're coming up with that 3 times b plus 4. Right. And then kind of the same thing over here. If we take and multiply that one by the LCD, the b minus 4 times b plus 4, then our b plus 4s this time divide out. And that leaves us with equal 7 times b minus 4. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and keep solving this. So here let's distribute through. So we've got 3b plus 12 equals 7b minus 28. And then we need to get our whole numbers on one side and our variables on the other. So I'm going to choose to subtract my 3b this way and add my 28 over this way. So when I do that, right here I'm left with 4b. And when I do 12 plus 28, I get 40. And now I just need to divide by 4. So it tells me the boat speed is going to be 10. And make sure you put your label on it, miles per hour is the boat speed. Mm -hmm. Something like that. What questions do you guys have on that or what can I clarify better for you? Anything there? Gotta speak up guys. If you have something that you want help with. Well, the thing about good. Is that making sense on how to set it up and then Yeah. Okay, what other kind of questions do you guys want to go through? I've got another one. Okay. 
Great. So fifteen is five over seven. Okay, so let me check it. Let me let me get to a place where I can write it. Okay, so five minus seven. So five over seven. Oh, five sorry. Five over seven. Okay. Minus square root of x. And this is all under five. That's all under five. Okay. Minus square root of x. And what does it say? Rationalize it or what are the instructions? Yes. The denominator of the following expression. Rationalize? Yeah. Sorry, cut out yes. on that first part. Okay. So what does it mean to rationalize? All right, well, it means that we need to get rid of the square roots in the denominator. So to do that, we need to multiply by the conjugate because we have a binomial here. All right, so, um, so we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. And so that's going to, the conjugate is 7 plus square root of x. So they're really similar to each other, right? If it's connected by a minus, the conjugate has a plus. If it's connected by a plus, the conjugate has a minus. All right, but whatever we do to the bottom, we also need to do to the top here. Okay. And then you're just going to, on the top, just distribute that 5 through. So 5 times 7 is 35. And then 5 times square root of x is 5 square root of x. And then on the bottom, all right, when we FOIL these together, 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times square root of x is 7 square root of x. And then if we do the inside terms, that's negative 7 square root of x. And then square root of x, negative square root of x times positive square root of x is going to give us negative um, square root of x squared. Right, and now we just need to simplify things up here. All right, so I can see that these middle terms here are opposites of each other, so they'll zero out. And then this, you know, negative x squared there, well, the, the opposite, like taking a square root and squaring it undo each other, so really we're just left with a minus x there. Right. Okay, so, so the, our overall answer then is going to be... Um, 35 plus 5 square root of x over 49 minus x. And that would be rationalized now because we have no square roots left on the bottom. Alright, questions on that one? No, I understand. Thank, Thank you, Vicki. Yeah, great. Okay, other questions you guys have or just concepts you want to look at? All right, I'm going to give you one here then. I mean, there's going to be, you know, you got to make sure that you, you know, are thinking through things. Definitely like, um, Domain and range is something that you guys want to make sure that you're really familiar with because when we're talking about functions, we usually talk about their domain a lot, right? So let's maybe just look at um, something like this. If I have a graph, ugh, gosh, it's always so hard to draw on here, make straight lines, so you're going to have to pretend that that is straight. <laughs> And then um, if I have something like this, oh gosh, <laughs> all right, pretend that's straight, I'm so sorry, all right, um, and then it's hitting here, here and here, right? Just to make sure we're clear on that, right? And so if it asks for the domain of this, what would that be in interval notation? Domain, you're looking from where to where?
Anyone? Nobody remembers what domain is? It's the X. Yeah, it's the X values, right? So on this one, since these have arrows that are there, um, that means that those would be going on forever. So this would be negative infinity to infinity, right? But if they had something where there wasn't, um, darn it, I shouldn't really erase the whole thing. Um, let's see, I'm going to try and so if I have something like <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to put an arrow at the end of it again. Like, so I'm trying to put like an open circle there. And then over here, maybe it just goes to here with a closed circle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard. It's much harder to write on than the board, but it is. Okay, so. Um, when we're looking at this, right, let's pretend that this is kind of looking like a parabola here. And so on this one, it's not going to be negative infinity to infinity because um, it has, you know, like an open circle and a closed circle telling us that it's stopping there, right? So what would our domain of this one be? Is it a bracket negative? Two, mm -hmm. and then just two open. Something. So it yeah. looks like I was trying to make it look like it was to there. Also three parentheses. Yeah, because it's going through two at the x-axis, but that's going to be three. And then you write a parenthesis because it's an open right circle there, and you always have to go from small to big. When you're looking at that. Okay, so what what would the range be on this then? Zero and negative three? Quite. So where is the very lowest part of the graph? Negative three. Negative three. So we'll say bracket negative three. And then how high up does the graph go? And I was trying to make it look like it was at four, but it didn't do what I wanted it to. So, so I'll give you that one since it was kind of unclear. But it is an open circle there at four, so we do need to put a parenthesis there as well. All right? Okay, and then what if they asked you other questions like what is, um, or find, f of zero, what would that be? <coughs> so this is saying, remember, when x is zero, what is y? Anybody? When x is zero, what is y? The negative three. Yeah, it's negative three, right? Because we're looking here on the graph. This is where x is zero. And so we see where is that hitting our graph? And it's right here at negative three. Okay, and then another um, thing that could be asked is something like, you know, if f of x equals, um, let's see, this one might be a little bit um, harder to do, but let's try and do, um, let's see if f of x equals, well, I guess let's just do negative 2. No, that's going to be hard to see. Let's do, oh my gosh, if f of x is I know it's so hard when you can't really see it. Let's say f of x is 4. 
Oh no, can't say four because it doesn't equal four. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing a very good job on this because my graph is not. Um, let's see. Let's just try and do. We'll just say two, I guess. So on this one, and on the you know graphs, they'll be a lot better. But this one's saying when y is two, what is x? So on this one, right, go on the y-axis. Here's where y is two, and so then we're trying to figure out where that's hitting. And, you know, maybe on this one it looks like it's about two and a half or something. Right? Is where it's going to hit that on there. Does that make sense? Because think about these as like, these are points, right? This is the point zero, negative three. So I would check and make sure, like, is that point on our graph? Yeah, it is. It's right there. Right? And then this one is 2.5 comma 2. Is that point on our graph? Well, let's go over 2.5 and up 2. Yep, it's hitting the graph right there. Okay, so just make sure you're just, I mean, if it, if you need to approximate like that, then just write it, you know, like now, just, you know, like a half or something like that, if it's somewhere in between, if it's not right on that graph. Or right, I'm sorry, right on a specific like a whole number. Okay. All right, what other questions or concepts do you guys want to look at? Gotta let me know what you're, you've been struggling with. I can't really read your minds and know what you need help with. I'm giving you a lot of practice finals to try, a lot of ways to get ready for the final, so what have you looked through that you need more help on? How are you guys feeling about like solving um, rational equations or adding and subtracting rational expressions. Sometimes with those fractions in it, that tends to be something that um, people maybe have a harder time with, but I'll just wait until you guys tell me what you need help with. Can we go over one of the quadratic word problems? Yeah, you bet. So let's see. Um, I have one on here, I think. Okay, so this one, it gives, um, it's talking about like, um, a student has an illness that typically lasts 24 hours. The temperature F, all right, so I'm gonna make sure we understand what things are. Temperature F is degrees Fahrenheit, and, um, and T is the hours after. Um, the illness begins. Okay, and then they give you uh, an equation. So usually with these quadratics, they're just going to give you the equation to look at. So this one says f of t equals negative 0 0.017 t squared plus 0 0.374 t and then plus 97.8. Okay, and then if it asks you, find the number of hours until they have their max temperature. Okay, 
Right? And then also, what is the max temperature? So this is the hours to the max temperature, and then this one is just the max, the maximum temperature. Okay, so if it's asking you to find the maximum, what is it really asking you to find there? Uh, the, the hottest, hottest temp, temp that it will get to. Yeah, and so like if we were looking at it graphically, like think about what does this kind of look like, right? Our leading coefficient is negative, so that tells us what? It's an upside down parabola, right? And so this right here is our maximum. What part of the parabola is that? The vertex. Yeah, so we just need to find the vertex is what we're trying to do there, right? Okay, so we can use the vertex formula to do that. So remember that we have, I mean, in this case, it's going to be T, I guess, but we we said like x equals negative b over 2a, right, is what we're dealing with here. But um, since we're dealing with like, you know, different variables and stuff, that really would be t. All right, so let's put that in. So what would, so negative b would be the opposite of that. So 0.374, and we need to make it negative. And then all over 2 times a, which is this. Right, negative point zero one seven, and then we just need to simplify that up there a little bit. And what do we get? Divide those out. Okay. 11, I think is what it is. 11 what? Hours? Hours. Okay, and then how would we figure out um, what the max temperature is? <coughs> so remember, this is telling us the temperature, and this is the time, right? How do we figure this out? That F of T. Does this thing you would use the full formula? Um, no. So we're trying to remember we found part of the vertex. Now we're trying to find the other part of the vertex, right? So we know it's 11 comma something, right? But we're trying to figure out what that something is. How do we figure that out? <coughs> I know you guys know. Speak up. You would plug the 11 back into the equation. Yeah. So we need to put this in here as well as in here. All right. So when I do that, we get F of T, that's what we're trying to find. This is going to tell us the temperature, equals negative 0 0.1 or 0 0.17 times 11 squared plus that times 11 and then plus 97.8, right? And as long as like you write that whole thing out on your, you know, on your uh, paper so I can see what you intended to do, if you put that all in your calculator and just come up with that, net, you know, that answer, that's great, and I think on here it's like it's round to the nearest tenth is what it wants you to round to on it. So what do you come up with when you do that? 
99.9. Yeah. 99.9 what? Degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you remember your labels on all of those things too. Okay. Now, if it was something like where it asked, you know, when would, like if it was a ball that was up in the air, when would it reach the ground? Then you'd have to, you know, set it equal to zero. They wouldn't give you something this ugly to use, though on it would be something more that you'd be able to factor um, or something like that. So remember that you do need to know the quadratic formula. There's, um, you know, there could be some questions on here where you need to use the quadratic formula. And you definitely need to know how to do completing a square because there's going to be a circle problem. I'll just tell you that. All right, and so you've got to do completing a square with that one. Okay, okay what else? Is number 24 and 2019 the same as the one we did previously? Let's see. Um, Let's see it. It's similar, but if there's something like it, uh, you know, like these on there, I mean, it's still setting it up with the distance equals rate times time on that one. But the one that we did earlier would be more like what you would be doing on it. On the exam. Okay. Okay. But they're they're very similar to each other for sure. So. Okay. Okay, what else would you like to look at? There's radicals that we've talked about. There's logs. There's um, being able to like graph some things like graphing exponentials, um, graphing parabolas. Oh no, there's a lot of different things that we've talked about. Let's do number eleven. On, on um, 2019. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's do that one. It's the one with the exponents? Yeah. Okay, so this one says, in parentheses, negative 3 y to the negative 4th over 4 x to the 8th times x to the fourth over y to the negative seven. And the directions are just to simplify right on this. And remember, part of simplifying means that we can't have negative exponents left in our answer. Right? Our coefficients can be negative, but our exponents can't be negative. Right? Oh, whoops, I think this had a three on the outside of this one. Sorry. All right, so <clears throat> I'd probably just start with that first that first parenthesis and notice that that's being raised to the third power, right? I could just distribute that power of three to everything right now, um, and so that you know could be a good place to start on it. If it was a negative exponent, then I usually like to flip it first, um, just so I'm not distributing a negative through, but um, that's totally up to you. So if we have negative 3 raised to the third power, and then we have y to the negative 4 to the third power, what are we doing with that negative 4 and 3? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yep, multiply them, so that's going to give us negative 12. And then on the bottom, we've got 4 to the third power, and then x to the 8 times 3 power, so it's to the 24th. And then these are connected by multiply, so I'm just going to write it all together as one fraction because really they're, you know, all part of the same. So I've got x to the fourth here and then y to the negative seventh here. Okay. All right, what would be another next good step to take? There's more than one, so where, where would you think to go next? 
The negative 3 to the third. Okay. So what is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? That one would be negative 27. Uh -huh. And then 4 to the third. 4 times 4 times 4. 64. 64. And then probably on this same step when I do that, I'm going to move that y to the negative 12 downstairs to make it happy, right? And y to the negative 7 upstairs to make it happy. But then we still have x to the 4th and x to the 24th. Okay. Everybody good so far there? Right? And remember, it's okay to have a negative coefficient, right? We just can't have negative exponents. All right, so now let's get our y's together and our x's together, right? So I can see that these guys need to be together. So what would I get there when I combine those? That's negative, negative 5. Okay, so that means the 5 needs to end up where? Or sorry. Down. Yeah, so the y to the fifth it needs to end up on the bottom, right? Because we can see there's five more y's on the bottom than there are on the top. Okay, and then what about our x's? That's uh, negative 20. Mm -hmm. And so then that has to flip downstairs to be x to the 20th, right? Or you can ask yourself on this, remember when we did it in class, I just kind of said, Ask yourself, where are there more x's on the bottom? How many more x's are there? There's 20 of them. And then that would be your answer. That's all you can do with it. All right? You, I mean, if you could, you know, if 27 and 64 had something in common, then you'd be, you know, you'd want to reduce those, but they don't. So nothing you can reduce there. It's a good one to look at. We have stuff like that. Okay, there's also like writing equations of lines um, that can be look, good to look at. Solving radical equations. Is that adding or subtracting radicals? Different types of graphing. Can we go over 23 on 2019? I think it's subtracting radicals. Let's see. Yep, it is. Let's do that one. This up here. So this one says 2x and then inside parentheses 48x minus 6 square root of 12x to the third. Okay, so when we're subtracting, can we subtract these just how they are right now? No. No, what do we have to do first? Get the same base? Yeah, we got to get that same stuff inside, right? That's called the radicand. And so we need to break these down to see what we can take out. All right, so this is, you want to simplify first here. All right, so um, take the 48, do the prime factorization. So 6 times 8, so 2 times 3, and then 2 times 2 times 2. And then with 12, all right, that's 4 times 3, and then 4 breaks down to 2 times 2. Okay, and so here we can see, all right, I've got a pair of 2s that I can take out. And I've got another pair of twos that I can take out. And when they come out, they want to be multiplied by what's out there already. All right, so I'm going to write it down like this just to make sure everybody's seeing. So we're doing two times two times two, because those are the two twos that we could take out here. All right, and there was already a two out there. And then we have the x. And then what's left inside that square root? Three x. Yeah, all right, there's that 3 that was left over, and then there was an x still in there. So 3x. All right, and then minus 6 times what? What gets to come out? The 2. Just a 2. All right, 
And then, oh, sorry, there's an x that gets to come out though too, right? Because we have x to the third. So two of those x's get to come out as an x. And then there's still an x left inside. So inside we still have that three. And then we have another x. And that didn't get to come out yet. So, all right, and then if we simplify this a little bit more, right, that's 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 8x square root of 3x minus 12x square root of 3x. So now those radicands are the same. So now we can subtract those numbers on the outside. So 12x minus, or sorry, 8x minus 12x is negative 4x. And then there's that square root of 3x needs to stay inside there. And so that would be your answer. That looks like a really good test question for sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Can we look at number 16 on the 2019? Uh-huh. Let's see. All right, so yeah, solving a rational equation. So this one says t over t minus 1 minus 2 over t plus 3 equals 8 over t squared plus 2t minus 3. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the LCD, but before we can do that, we need to um, factor this, all right? That's going to help us be able to find the LCD a little bit better. So what multiplies to be negative 3 that adds to be 2? Well, a positive 3 and a negative 1. All right, and so we can see both of those, that t minus 1 and t plus 3, actually end up over here too, right? Which is usually going to be the case because I'm not trying to make it really hard for you. All right, that just makes it a little bit easier. So that means my LCD is t plus 3 times t minus 1. So then I want to take the LCD and multiply that by each part, all right, all three parts. So t plus 3 oops, times t minus 1, and then same thing here, and then same thing on this one. All right, and then I just need to remember these are over 1. So that helps you to write those in. All right, and then I'm trying to kill off the denominator. It's going to be too hard to solve these equal, this equation with our variables in the bottom. And so by doing this, it's going to make it easier for us to solve it. All right, so we can see that t minus 1 divides out with that one. And then that's just going to leave me with t times t plus 3. And nothing in the denominator, right? There's only a 1 there now. So we don't need to write that in. And then on the next one, t plus 3's divide out. And then leaving negative 2 times t plus 1, or t minus 1. And be really careful. Sometimes with the subtract, people forget um, to distribute that negative 2 through that we're going to do on that next step. So just make sure you remember that negative there. And then on this one, both of those terms end up dividing out, so there's nothing to multiply by the 8, so it's just equals 8. All right. And so then, like I said, from here we can distribute this through and see what happens. So I get t squared plus 3t, and then minus 2t plus 2, just distributing that through, equals 8. Okay. Now I see I have a t squared. And so in order to solve, all right, the instructions on this are to solve, to solve for t, and there's a t squared, I need to get everything over to one side, like set it equal to zero, so that I can either factor it or use the quadratic formula um, to find out what t is. All right, so I'm going to subtract this 8 over here. And so that's going to end up with t squared, put those two together, plus t, 
and then minus 6 equals 0. And then oftentimes this will factor, so you don't have to use the quadratic formula. All right, so what times what is negative 6 that adds to be 1? Okay, so, and then 2 needs to be negative, right? And 3 positive, so that we add them and we'll get to be positive 1. And when we multiply them, we get negative 6 there. Okay, so then we need to set each of these equal to 0 and solve them. Oops, no. All right, you, you got the idea. You sometimes just skip that step, so sorry. So t equals negative 3 and t equals 2 are our solutions. But remember, you got to check your answers, right? And by that I mean, will either of those make the bottom 0 in our original one? All right, so look at right here. Oh, goodness, let's see what I wanted to do. Crapola. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what I did there. <laughs> ah, okay, well, <laughs> I can't see it. Okay, so do you see that that t minus 3 can't work because if I put negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. So that means that t minus 3 is not a good answer, but t equals 2 is. And so that would be my only solution. Now, if neither of them worked out, then we'd have a no solution. right? Or if we only came up with one answer to begin with and it didn't work out, there would be a no solution. So make sure you check your answers. And remember, I told you in class to check um, specifically when you have the rationals, right? When you're dealing with um, fractions, right? Because we can't have the bottom be 0. And you also need to check your square roots when you're solving square roots. Because we can't have a negative inside the square root. We can't divide by 0. Um, so that's, those are the two things that we're looking for. So make sure you check your answers on those two things. Okay, because there could be something that comes up like this, where there's an extraneous solution. Okay. All right, do you guys remember the like bases? property. I mean, we talked about it not too long ago, but let's look at one like this. What if you're asked to solve 4 to the x plus 1 equals 16 to the x minus 4? So how do we go about solving that? Um, 16 and 4 are the same. Yeah. Right, we got to get those bases the same. So I know that 4 squared is 16, right? So I could leave this as 4 to the x plus 1 equals 4 squared, but then I still have that x minus 4 at the top, right? And so I'm really going to be distributing that 2 through. But now that I can see my bases are the same, now I can set those exponents equal to each other, right? So I'm going to put that equal to that. So x plus 1 equals, and if I distribute that through, 2x minus 8. And then let's get our x's on one side and our whole numbers on the other side. And when I do that, I end up with x equals positive 9. And then remember, on any question that says solve, you can always check your answers. So make sure you get through all of the questions first, right? And then I would go back and just any question that says solve, try and put it into your calculator and see if you get right, the same answer or the same number on both sides of the equation when you put it in. Because if you don't, then that means either you did something wrong with your arithmetic or 
it's an extraneous solution. If we have something like, you know, rational equations or square root equations. Okay, what else would you like to look at? Go over, over a complex, complex fraction. fraction. Yeah. Let's see, I have one in here. I do have one. Oh, here's one. Let's try this one. So what if we have um, 2 over x squared plus 3 over y, all divided by 3 over x minus 2 over y squared. Okay. So we want to try and find an LCD of both the denominators on the top and the denominators on the bottom. All right, so what would our LCD be? So we're looking at all four of those, the x squared, the y, the x, and the y squared. Any ideas? What would our LCD be? Would it be x to the third, y to the third? Um, we actually don't have to have it to the third because do you see, I could just multiply this y by another y, and that will give me y squared. So our LCD is really going to be x squared, y squared. Okay, so let's look at that and see. All right, so we need, we want it to, <clears throat> to look like that. All right, so I'm going to just kind of put it here. So if I want this to be x squared, y squared, then I need to have, you know, I need to look at this and say, okay, what, um, what do I need to multiply this by to get it to look to that? Well, I need to multiply it by a y squared. And so then I need to multiply this by a y squared. Okay. And so then I get 2y squared on the top there. And then on this one, what do I need to multiply this by so it looks like x squared, y squared? Well, I need to multiply it by another y and by an x squared. Right. So that gives me plus 3y x squared. Whatever I do at the bottom, I also need to do at the top. Okay, and now I can do the same thing down here. All right, trying to make this into x squared, y squared on each of these. So this one I need to multiply by another x. And also, it's missing the y squared. So I'm going to do that on the top also. I've got 3xy squared minus, and then this guy is missing just an x squared. So minus 2x squared. Okay, so let me make sure everybody's with me to that point, because I know that's kind of, this is usually where it's, you know, probably the most confusing. I guess. So now we'd want to take our bottom fraction, the one on the bottom, and flip it. All right, so we're going to keep that first one the same here. So let me write it out like this. So I've got to have 2y squared plus 3yx squared all over x squared y squared. Right, and this is connected by division right now. But if we flip the bottom, right, that's doing the reciprocal of it, then we can change this to multiplication. So we get x squared y squared over 3xy squared minus 2x squared. And then I want to see what I can reduce here. Well, I, um, so all of this would have to be 1 like all of that would have to look exactly on the same on the bottom to be able to um, to be able to use it. But you could also like factor out a greatest common factor there too, and that might you know be something that you want to look at. But right off the bat, like you should notice that this x squared y squared 
divides out with that x squared y squared. So those denominators, we made them the same when we first started, so they should cancel out automatically when I flip and multiply. All right, so here I can see, all right, yeah, I could take out a y here, and that would leave me with 2y plus 3x squared. And then here I could take out an x, which would mean leave me 3y squared minus 2x. But that doesn't really help me because I still don't have any common factors. And so I can just leave my answer like that. And it doesn't matter to me if you left it like this over this, right, not factored, or if you factor them. Like, you know, so if you have it in either way, we'll get full points on it. So. And that's all we can do, so that is your answer. All right, was that helpful? That one? Yeah. yeah, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, let's see. And time. Take probably about another 15 minutes if um, you guys have questions. There's one more that I wanted to have you guys look at. Um, so let's try this one. What if I have like f of x equals, um, let's see where did that one go? f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. And so on this, it's going to ask you maybe to graph this, but it's also going to ask you some other things. So what if it asks you to find the vertex? How do you identify the vertex when it's set up in this form? What would our vertex be? Isn't it negative 2 and 1? Close. Remember, insiders are liars. That would be positive, positive two and negative, negative one. one. Positive two and positive one. So remember, just the stuff that's inside parentheses, right, you're changing, but the other one isn't. That's why I say so. Insiders or liars just means anything that's inside some grouping symbols, you'll always do the opposite of, but the other one you leave the same. Just remember that, so be careful with that. Okay, so that's our vertex. And then what if it asks you to find the y-intercept? Would our y-intercept be on this? So zero and one? Not zero and one. So I, I think you're looking here. If we had it in the form of like 3x squared plus 4x plus 7, right? When it's in this form, then that is the y-intercept. But this is not the y-intercept because we don't have it in that form, right? But you're right in saying like our y-intercept always our x is zero, and then we need to figure out what the y is. So I'm gonna put zero in place of my x and figure out what my y is, right? So if I have y equals negative two times zero minus two squared plus one, and then <clears throat> 0 minus 2 is negative 2, so I've got negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, remember we've got to do our exponents first, so negative 2 all squared is positive 4, so I've got 2 times 4 plus 1. I've got negative 8 plus 1, whoops, which is negative 7. So y-intercept would be 0, negative 7. And in the instructions, it will say to write those as ordered pairs, so make sure you do so. Right? If it's asking you to find a y-intercept, an x-intercept, or a vertex, make sure you always write those in or as ordered pairs. Okay? And then <clears throat> if we used those things to make the graph, right? I'll try and do it over here a little bit. Right? So I know my y-intercept is 0, <clears throat> negative 7, so let me go down, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven. All right, so I know I've got uh, my y intercept there. And then my vertex is two, one. So over two, up one is there. All right, and remember that's my vertex, so that's my turnaround point. All right, so I know that I'm having, and notice again, it was a negative right here. So that's telling me it's an upside down parabola. So I can see kind of the part of it being formed here by going down like that, right? And then <clears throat> I can see that this is two places away from where my vertex is. So I need to go two more places over this way. And then I could put another point there. And so, oh, that's not quite where it should be. <laughs> okay, so kind of like that. Right, and if there, you know, if you wanted to do another point, if you're like, oh, I'm not sure quite how to do that, you know, just plug, you know, if you're like, okay, I want to figure out what X is for, what is Y? And then you could just plug it in the same way we did with zero there and just find one other point on there to make it a little bit easier to see that it's a parabola shape. Because if you only write that, left side of the parabola, then you're going to miss points because it does show up on the other side too. It's just we only chose two points that didn't show anything over here. Does that make sense? Or clarify anything better there? Let's just do one <clears throat> question. I told you domain and range is really important, right? And, and domain especially, because that's telling us which X values we can pick. So if I had something like this function, f of X equals um, square root of 3X minus 4, and it asks me to find the domain. And I also have another one that is um, something like 4 over x minus 3 or something like that. Okay, so any ideas about how we find the domain on those? So let's look at this one first. And maybe I'll even like throw something else in here. Like what if we had this? Right. Okay, so with this one, what kind of numbers can we not have in our square root? Yeah, we can't have yeah. negative numbers in the square root and come out with a real answer, right? Those give us imaginary solutions. And so if we're trying to graph something on a grid, right, we're not going to be dealing with those imaginary solutions. So we want to figure out what x values we can pick so that it makes it only positive numbers inside there. So remember, you'll take just what's inside there, right? So you leave off that square root for right now, and you just take that 3x minus 4. And how do I say mathematically, like all of the positive numbers, or 0? It has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? What kind of numbers are greater than 0? Those are our, yeah, those are our positive numbers, and that's what we need these to be. And it can be zero. We can take the square root of zero and get zero for an answer. So whenever you're finding the domain of any kind of square root, right, you're going to put it greater than or equal to zero, and then you're just going to solve it like a normal equation that we've done before, but keep that inequality sign in there instead of 
p unit. You don't change it to an equation, right? P of it is an inequality. So x has to be greater than or equal to 4 thirds. And so if I'm writing that in interval notation, it's everything bigger than 4 thirds. So saying 4 thirds and bigger would be 4 thirds to infinity. Right, so if I pick any number bigger than that, I'll get just positive numbers inside there. If I pick something smaller than that, like if I pick 0, right, which is not in the domain, if I put 0 in here, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 is not greater than 0. Right? And so that, that wouldn't work out. Any numbers that are smaller than 4 thirds won't work out. Okay, but that would be your answer. Okay, so what about this one? What are we looking at here to figure out what our domain is? You have to set the denominator to zero. Yeah, so we want to set both of those. We want to say, you know, so which x values can't, you know, be a part of there. So say, you know, take that x minus 3 and say that cannot equal 0, right? Because if this equals 0, 0 times anything would give me 0 on the bottom. And I also have my x plus 1 cannot equal 0, because if that was 0, 0 times anything would give me 0 in the denominator. So Add the 3 over, and we get x cannot be positive 3. Subtract the 1 over, and we get x cannot be negative 1. All right? Why can't it be these two numbers? Because if you plug those numbers in, it would equal 0. Yeah. Can x be 0? Sure. Can x be um, 10? Yeah, can x be 2? Yeah, you know, just not 3 and negative 1. Those are the only two numbers that are going to make it 0. Okay, so to write it in interval notation, right, these are our excluded values, but to write it in interval notation, remember if we think of a number line here, we're saying x cannot be negative 1 and it can't be positive 3. So it's kind of like we have a hole in our graph here. We can't have it here or here, but it could be any number that is big or smaller than negative 1 in between these guys or bigger than 3. All right, so again, when we write our domain out, we're going to look at it from left to right. So if I'm looking to the left, well, it can be all numbers to, out to negative infinity up to negative 1, but not including negative 1. So I'm going to put a parenthesis there because that would, remember that negative 1 is going to make it 0. Okay, but we've got more, so we put a union and say, oh, it can also be the stuff between negative 1 and 3. And there's more. It can also be the stuff 3 or bigger. Right? It just can't be these two things, those two values. Every other value is good. Okay. okay, so we do have to write it with the union and all that? If it asks you to write it in interval notation, yes. If it asks oh, okay. for the excluded values, then you write it like this. Okay. And this is interval notation. Okay, anything else you guys can think of? Remember, there's 22 questions on the final. Um, so that's really not a lot of questions. It's meant for you to be able to get done with in an hour and a half. Uh, but you have two hours to take the final exam. And so that still should hopefully give you some time, even if you're a slower test taker, um, to still go back and maybe check some of your answers. Right? So, um, so remember, don't get stuck on one problem in particular. 
right, go through and, you know, and get all of the ones you do know how to do first, and then, um, you know, and then figure them out from there. Like, just don't get too stuck. I see sometimes students get stuck on a question, you know, for 10 or more minutes, and they're not really making any progress, but they're like, oh, I don't want to stop because I want to try and figure this out. But just stop because you're, it's actually better for your brain to stop, go on to do some other questions, and then come back to it later. Because your brain is still like in the background kind of thinking about that question. And as you're working on other questions that might be trying to relate it to it, oh yeah, I okay, I think I remember what I need to do there. Because this problem kind of gave me a hint of what I needed to do. So that's why I said just, you know, if you feel like you're spinning your wheels and you're not making any progress, then just, you know, just skip it for now and come back to it. So you can make sure you get all the problems. All right. Um, let's see, there's one more type that I wanted to look at. I remember, I'm just gonna mark it on here. Here, if you come up with another one that you want to talk about, I don't know. Okay, I think this was one. Okay, so what if they tell you something like this? F of x equals 4x to the third plus 9x squared. Um, let's see. Um, and then g of x is negative 7x plus 6. Okay. So it gives these to you, and then it says, find x when f of x equals g of x. So what is that telling us to do? What does that mean? f of x equals g of x. What does that want me to do? That's kind of telling me how I'm supposed to set up the problem. Are you, you plug f, f of x into g of x? Um, not into it, but we put them equal to each other, right? If it said f of g of x, that would look like this if it wanted you to put it inside it, right? But on this one, it's just saying just put them equal to each other. So I'm going to replace that f of x with the 4x to the third plus 9x squared. Oh, I think I, oh, I messed these up though. This should be positive 7. That should be negative 6. Sorry. And then um, equals 7x minus 6. Okay. And then what can we do from here? How would we go about solving that? Because that's what it wants us to do. If it's saying find x, right, it's telling us to solve this. How do I solve for x on something like this? Mm -hmm. 
do this. So everything to the other side and made it equal to zero. Yeah. So you'd always want to subtract those over. Put them on one side. So we're putting them over here. Right. And so um, that's going to have 4x to the third plus 9x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals zero. And then um, on this... I don't know that I wrote down one that was as good as what I wanted there, but let's see. Yeah, this isn't going to work out the way I wanted it to. But if it was a four-term polynomial, then I want to split it here and factor, do factor by grouping, right? And they would make it so that they it would come out nice, but you would, you know, continue to do that. But I, but it was more this part up here that I was more worried about, right? So if it tells you you know, figure out what x is when you have these equal to each other. Just set them equal to each other, subtract it over, put zero on one side, and then um, factor it to solve it. Okay. So yeah, I didn't choose, I should have chose my numbers differently, but so those would be able to work out better. I was thinking it would, but it doesn't. Does that kind of make sense, though, what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to stop there then. I'm going to stop at 1.30-ish, um, you know. So if you, you know, have any other questions that come up between, you know, like sometime tonight if you're looking at things, um, let me know. I will be in the room tomorrow. Um, I'll get there at 8.30. I don't think there's a there's a class before us taking an exam so it shouldn't be an issue so we're just going to get there early so if anybody wants to kind of get there early just settle in a little bit maybe look over some formulas that you need to make sure you have memorized it wouldn't try and do a lot of studying in the morning because your brain will get too tired and then by the time you do your final it might just be like mathed out right so try not to do too much studying um, you know, in the morning before the exam, but maybe just look over formulas and make, just quiz yourself on them to see if you have those memorized. Okay? Okay, thank you, thank you. Becky. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. You're going to do awesome. Okay, make sure you get those extra credit and um, practiced exams done if you haven't done so already. Somebody was saying that the second one was locked. Was, yeah. yeah. Is that true for everybody? Yeah, yeah it was locked for me too. too. That is so weird. Okay, I'm going to go in right now and try and figure out why that was locked because I didn't um, didn't see why, and so I thought maybe it was just uh, one person, but let me check on that right now. I want you guys to be able to have a chance to like do that maybe tonight or something. Okay. And I'll send out a message um, just letting everybody know that it's unlocked when I get it figured out what's going on with it, okay? All right, guys, have a super duper night, and we will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye. Bye. Bye, Becky. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow.